the president of Alpha Delta Omega chapter, Ms. Tawana Williams, who is a proud Hampton alum. And she will bring you greetings and welcome on behalf of Alpha Delta Omega chapter. Good morning and welcome to the virtual tour of Hampton and Tennessee State University hosted by the Alpha Delta Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. As Janine mentioned, I am Tawana Williams, the president of this chapter, and we're located in Nashville, Tennessee. Alpha Kappa Alpha focuses on education as one of their program initiatives with the emphasis on historically black colleges and universities. This of course is near and dear to our international president, Dr. Glenda Glover, who currently serves as a double leadership role as president of Alpha Kappa Alpha and Tennessee State University. I could not be more excited to have this virtual tour of these two campuses because they hold a very special place in my heart. I'm a proud graduate of both institutions and I can proudly say the woman and the leader that I am is because of these two institutions. While this year has definitely not been a normal year, we know that college decisions are still important to you. And we hope that this event will allow you the opportunity to visit these two great institutions of higher learning while remaining safe. Please listen carefully and ask questions. Mm -hmm. We will make sure that you have the two admissions representatives contact information at the end of this meeting. The ladies of Alpha Delta Omega welcome you and we hope that each of you have an academically successful year and we hope that if you decide on a college that it is an HBCU. Welcome. It is also my pleasure to introduce my friend and fellow Hamptonian Crystal Jones who serves as the Assistant Director of Admissions at Hampton University. She has always been willing to help when I call her if that meant coming down for an event, sending recruitment material, or participating in a forum like this. She is a native of North Carolina and has 20 years of college admissions experience. Her mission now is to allow God to use her in this place. So we'll start off with a video of our Home by the Sea, and then you'll hear from Crystal Jones, the Assistant Director of Admissions at Hampton University. Ms. Tawana, we can't hear this. And welcome to Hampton University. My name is Angela Nixon Boyd, and I have the awesome privilege of serving as the Dean of Admission yeah. at what I consider to be the best university on this planet. The Office of Admission has the responsibility of of sharing the Hampton experience to assist you with the college decision-making process. Today, we invite you to join us for a tour of this amazing campus that we affectionately call our home by the sea. And what better way to do that than to have some of our currently enrolled students take you around the campus. So, let's get started. You're perfectly right, Dean Boyd. We would love to show these future Hamptonians their new home by the sea. My name is Michael Adams. And my name is Celine Hamilton, and we will be your host for today. So if you're ready, we're ready. Let's go. We're at one of my favorite spots on campus, the waterfront. This is where students come to relax and hang out with friends. And fun fact, it's Wi-Fi accessible. So yes, you can do your work here too. Next on our tour, we've arrived at the newest addition to Hampton University's campus, our Legacy Park. As you walk through Legacy Park, you will see statues of many historical figures, such as our founder, General Samuel Chapman Armstrong. And our president, Dr. William R. Harvey, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., President Barack Obama, and Rosa Parks. 
Now we're at Hampton University's Memorial Chapel. Chapel is non-denominational and holds services every Sunday from 11 to 12. Next, we've arrived at Hampton University's Academy Building. The Academy Academy Building houses our Naval ROTC program as well as the William R. Harvey Leadership Institute program. The goal of the Leadership Institute program is to prepare students for leadership roles in their chosen profession. This is W.E.B. Du Bois Hall, our only co-ed residence hall on campus. It also houses the Freddie T. Davey Honors College, which offers a curriculum that enhances the regular university experience. James Hall is a newly renovated freshman male residence hall that is fully equipped with suite style living spaces. We have now arrived at the largest freshman female residence hall on campus, Virginia Cleveland Hall, also known as VC Hall. Now I gotta say, this is my favorite residence hall because this is where I stayed my freshman year. On the left side, you'll find traditional style rooms, while on the right side, you'll find suite style rooms. Welcome to Turner and DuPont Hall. The School of Science is home to majors such as biology, biochemistry, chemistry, computer science, cybersecurity, and physics. Hampton University School of Pharmacy offers an academic program that produces clinically astute professional pharmacists who are currently competent, who expose lifelong learning, and who use technology to their advantage and to that of their patients. The mission of Hampton University School of Pharmacy is to provide contemporary pharmaceutical education that produces highly skilled pharmacists. These pharmacists deliver quality pharmaceutical care to the people of Virginia and the nation. The Hampton University School of Pharmacy is the number one producer of African-American pharmacists in Virginia. Buckman Hall houses a school of business, which includes finance, accounting, and the five-year MBA majors. Also, the school's two computer laboratories and the departments of business administration, management, marketing, entrepreneurial studies, and economics are housed here. The business school recently received resources from Wells Fargo and Prudential Financial to upgrade the school's electronic classrooms and to add future assets for students. We are at the Hampton University School of Engineering and Technology, better known to the students as Olin. Olin was founded in 1995 and prepares professionals to meet the challenges of the global marketplace in the built environment, transportation, and technology. Our engineering students have placed first in the National Advancing Minorities Interest in Engineering Design Challenge competition three years in a row. Hampton University was the first college in the state to offer a nursing program. Hampton University School of Nursing has been training nurses for 129 years and training baccalaureate nurses for 27 years. We are the oldest continuous baccalaureate program in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We continue to strive to be the number one producer of multicultural nurses in the nation. Rear Admiral Sylvia Trent Adams has served as the Acting Surgeon General and is now the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health in the United States of America and is a proud Hampton University School of Nursing graduate. Next, we've arrived at Armstrong Hall, which houses the School of Liberal Arts and Education, as well as the university's English, Mass Media, Foreign Language, and Music Departments. The Little Theater can also be found inside, where plays are put on each semester free of charge for our students. The Hampton University Marching Force is the largest and loudest student organization on campus. Comprised of over 200 members, the Marching Force has performed in Barack Obama's inaugural parade, the New Year's Day parade in Rome, Italy, and the Honda Battle of the Bands. The drumline has also performed in the Tournament of Roses Parade, and the band has recently been selected to perform in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The next academic building on our tour is the Scripps Howard School of Journalism and Communication. Scripps Howard was founded in 2002 and houses the majors of strategic communications and journalism. Inside, the building holds an auditorium, TV station, radio station, as well as seminar rooms. Scripps Howard is also the home of the student-affiliated radio station, WHOV-FM 88.1. So be sure to check it out on your way home. So, if your future is being a radio personality, journalist, or editor, Scripps Howard is your home. Welcome to the heart of all things student activities, the Student Center. 
Inside the student center, you'll find an indoor track, a fitness center, a movie theater, a bowling alley, as well as various food options. And from 12 to 2 on Fridays, the student center turns into a party. Across the street from the Student Center is our football stadium, also known as Armstrong Stadium. From new student orientation week to graduation, you will have countless memorable moments here as a Hamptonian. Hampton University is a Division I school and a proud member of the Big South Conference. Behind me is the William R. and Norma B. Harvey Library. The library has five floors, and on each floor, you're sure to find a nice and comfortable place to study. It is also equipped with a 24-hour study room and computer labs. We have now arrived at Hampton University's cafeteria. Hampton opened their new $25 million, 100,000 square foot cafeteria in the summer of 2012. It seats about 1,000 people and has a variety of food selections, such as a fruit bar, a salad bar, a grill station offering burgers and steaks, wraps and pizzas, along with traditional entrees. It is also buffet style, meaning you can go back for more. Directly behind me, we have our circle of flags, also known as Ogden Circle. Each flag that you can see represents a different nationality that is represented on this campus. Now, legend has it that if at any point you walk across the grass as an undergraduate student, you won't graduate on time. So, future Hamptonians, stay off the grass. In front of Ogden Circle, we have Robert C. Ogden Hall, named after our notable Board of Trustee member. This is the main location for larger events, such as talent shows, concerts, and pageants. Welcome to Hampton University's museum, built in 1903. It is the oldest African-American museum in the country and the oldest museum in Virginia, featuring thousands of Native and African-American art. It is also open to the public, so you're always welcome to come and go as you please. We are now ending our tour at our national landmark, Emancipation Oak. This is where the Emancipation Proclamation was read to the newly freed slaves in the Hampton Roads area. Selena and I would like to thank you for joining us on this virtual tour of our home by the sea. We hope you enjoyed your experience and we look forward to seeing you real soon. Please make sure to connect with us via Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Details on the application process can be found at www.hamptonu.edu. All right. Well, welcome, welcome. Again, my name is Crystal Jones and I serve as the Assistant Director of Admission here at Hampton University, my home by the sea. I'm also a 1989 graduate of Hampton University. So I do want to thank you at this time for taking time out of your busy Saturday schedules to come and hear what we have to say about Hampton and Tennessee State, both great HBCUs. Here at our Hampton University, presently we have our application open. We are on our, um, the Common App as well as our own application. We have an early action deadline of November 1st and then the next deadline will be March 1st. But for those students that are interested in not paying that application fee, then you wanna go to our website and complete the application during the month of August. After the month of August, the application fee will be $50. Again, we are on the Common App and you can use the Hampton University website to complete the application for free during this month only. In terms of the type of students that we're looking for, we're looking for just wonderful students, great students with great character, students that have taken a rigorous course load of study to include four years of English, Algebra one, Algebra two, and Geometry, Biology and Chemistry, two years of a Social Science, six electives, and two years of, excuse me, and six years of um, electives, two years of a foreign language. In terms of admission, we're looking for students to have close to a 3.0, close to a thousand on that SAT, or close to a 20 on that ACT. Each year we have about mm, $2.5 million to give away to students that meet the requirements for our merit scholarships. And those requirements are 3.3 or higher GPA and 1100 or higher SAT or 22 or higher ACT. Again, 3.3 or higher GPA, and that's unweighted GPA, and 1100 or higher SAT or 22 or higher ACT. In terms of our student body, we have about 4,600 students our student teacher ratio last year was 12 to 1. 
average class size is about 19. In terms of um, some other things that you need to submit with the application, we ask that you submit one letter of recommendation, your essay, your transcript, and your SAT or ACT scores. Now, I know the question is gonna be, are we waiving those SAT or ACT scores in reference to COVID? <laughs> At the present time, we are not waiving the SAT or ACT scores. College Board assures us that they're going to be able to offer those tests to all students that would like to take it. So as the time moves forward, we will continue to look at this process. We will continue to have communications with College Board and ACT to see if anything's, anything's are changing. But presently, they secure us. They have ensured us that they will provide those tests. So we are still going to be accepting the SAT or the ACT. However, we are a test optional school and have been for the last five years. So for those students that have a 3.3 or higher GPA, unweighted GPA, at the top 10% of your class, you can submit your application without test scores. So definitely, if you are in that category, go ahead and submit those test scores. Um, excuse me, go ahead and submit your application. And we will quickly review, as I have already been reviewing applications for the fall, Thank you, Ms. Crystal. Next up, we will have Ms. Chandra Plez to introduce our next presenter. Good, is it still morning? I think it is. So good morning, everyone. Excited to introduce um, our representative from Tennessee State University, Ms. Portia Johnson. She is a friend and someone who I've known a long time, uh, who I view as a little sister, just an all round great person and a great lover of TSU. She is a two-time graduate of Tennessee State University College of Business. She received her bachelor's of, in business administration management and her master's in business administration. She's currently a doctoral candidate for the doctorate in educational leadership, higher education administration. And at TSU, she is the undergraduate admissions recruiter. She's also an adjunct professor in the College of Business. She loves TSU, she bleeds blue. So everyone, please welcome my friend, Ms. Portia Johnson. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, Chandra, so much for that amazing um, introduction. You, you make me sound like I got a little something going on, so thank you for that. <laughs> Um, so I just want to thank everybody for joining today. We have been so very excited about this event. And as always, I am so very excited to um, share the information, um, legacy, and admissions requirements for my beloved Tennessee State University. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and jump right into it and get started. Um, first thing I wanna do is a show a quick video of um, a tour of our campus from our Tiger Tour Guides. Welcome to Tennessee State University, one of America's premier institutions of higher learning and a renowned HBCU. TSU sits in the heart of the It City, the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, home of the Tennessee Titans, the Nashville Predators, and our beautiful 500-acre main campus, which rests on the shores of the Cumberland River. At TSU, Nashville's only public university, we embrace our institution's rich heritage and take pride in our legacy of producing impactful, innovative, and successful alum. Come experience TSU, where students think, work, and serve. 
here you have your campus center where you can go to the Cal. You can go to different restaurants inside like Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hunt, and Starbucks. And you can go to the bookstore to get all your essential needs for your classes. The four-story building is home to the financial aid department, admissions, records, as well as student organizations in intramural sports and recreation. Also located in this building is the bookstore, which also provides an online shopping option. In the building, there are several full options, including cab, food court, and a convenience store. And under our historical AF ROTC, this fighter jet adorns our campus center south entrance, which is also where a distinguished Air Force ROTC Detachment 790 is located. Our main library is called the Brown Daniel Library, a resource center where students study, research, and collaborate on class assignments. Our library is fully staffed and equipped with computers and other electronic media that are very useful throughout the semester and helpful for all students, both graduate and undergraduate, who are conducting research and preparing for classes. This is Greek Row, home of Tennessee State University's Divine Nine. Not only do we have the Divine Nine on Tennessee State University's campus, but we also have have 80 other organizations that you can join to enhance your student experience. Our Communication Performing Arts Center features the latest state-of-the-art facilities for music, theater, band, and broadcasting. It holds classrooms and listening labs for all the music programs as well as piano and instrument studios. It is also the practicing home for the renowned aristocrat of bands and our award-winning choir. The Student Success Center, formerly known as Learning Resource Center, or the LRC, houses many student support services to help you succeed here at TSU. This includes the Academic Advisement Center, the Honors College, the Media Center, and Reading and Writing Labs. As you can see, this is a beautiful facility with friendly staff members that are dedicated to assisting students to define and attain their educational goals. These are just a few of our favorite places on campus. If you would like a virtual tour, including the full experience, as well as our residence halls, please click the link in the comments below. Bye! All right, so that was a quick look at our campus, uh, just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like um, here at Tennessee State University. So now that we've taken a look at the campus, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about TSU um, and some of the things that we have to offer here our, um, and our um, admissions requirements. So a little bit about the history of Tennessee State University. Uh, Tennessee State University was founded in 1912. Um, in 1968 is when the name was changed to Tennessee State University. Um, our school was founded as a land grant institution here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we are accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, which is better known as SAC. And we are presided by our president, the illustrious Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover. So just to kind of touch on some of our notable alumni, we have so many uh, notable alumni here at Tennessee State University, but some of our most notable alumni is, of course, uh, the Oprah Winfrey. Uh, she is a national native and an alumni of Tennessee State University. Uh, Miss Wilma Rudolph, who was a gold medalist in the Olympics and was uh, ran track with the TSU Tiger Bills, um, our very famous Tiger Bell track team. Um, and in most recent history, we have some of our uh, notable alumni, such as Robert Covington, who plays in the NBA, and Dominique Rogers Cromartie, who plays in the NFL. And just to kind of touch on that, um, Tennessee State University, this is just a little fun fact, we have graduated more NFL players than any other institution in the state of Tennessee. So that just goes to show you that you, do, you can go to an HBCU and make it to the uh, NFL. So we're very proud of that. Um, so just a little bit about our location. Uh, Tennessee State University is located in Nashville, Tennessee, which is affectionately known as Music City. Our main campus is a 500 acre main campus that is located in uh, North Nashville. However, we do have another campus, which is known as our Avon Williams Downtown Campus, which is located in the heart of downtown Nashville, which is what you see here. Um, so, uh, in our Avon Williams downtown campus, it is housed. Uh, it houses uh, our College of Business 
and our graduate school. So that is something amazing for our uh, business students because our business students are located in the middle of downtown Nashville where they have access to companies such as um, Amazon, which is building a brand new headquarters right next door to the campus. Um, also, we have Bridgestone and HCA, uh, which all are companies that highly recruit our College of Business students. So that is something that really uh, stands out for our students is that they have that access to those companies and those companies do re recruit our students heavily. So these are just a little fun facts about uh, TSU. Uh, TSU is a Carn does have a Carnegie classification of R2, which means we are a doctoral institution with high research activity. So that means our, our institution does um, conduct a lot of research at our school. Um, being so because 96% of our faculty holds the highest degree in their field. So that means 96% of our factor uh, of our faculty are on the doctoral level, um, hold terminal degrees in their field, and do hold years of experience in their field. So it's not like you're coming and you're just listening to a professor that went to school. These are people who've actually worked for years in the fields that they are teaching. Um, our, we do have over 8,000 students at TSU. However, our class size is 16 to 1. So even though we have a large student body, we like to keep our class sizes small because we want our students to have those personal relationships with their professors. We encourage our students to network with their professors, build relationships, as well as, you know, give you the opportunity to have um, more one-on-one -on -one personal time with them. Um, we do have classes that have larger class sizes, but you will never have a class within um, the triple digits. Um, we have a computer lab that is located in every academic building on campus, so you don't have to worry about um, not having a computer. If you don't, there are computer labs located in every academic building, as well as Wi-Fi and printers. 75% um, of our students that complete internships are offered full-time positions by that company. So that means as a student, if you take the initiative to secure an internship, which we will help you and assist you with doing, then 75% of those students that are doing that and taking advantage of those many opportunities are securing full-time positions with those companies. So that's something to look forward to. We have students that are graduating and are making really good money and working for very reputable companies. Um, also, as I stated earlier, we do have a downtown campus um, that is located about 10 minutes from the school, uh, from our main campus. So we do have shuttle services that do run between the main campus and downtown campus. So you don't have to worry about catching the bus or catching a ride. If you do have classes downtown, you will have shuttle services provided that runs all day during class hours that will get you back and forth to the campus. And they run concurrently with the class times to ensure students get there on time. Um, also, another uh, big thing that our students love is we have no classes on Friday. So what does that mean? You're like, what? No classes on Friday. <laughs> so what that means is the majority of our schedule is either Monday, Wednesday classes or Tuesday, Thursday. We don't have any classes that really um, incorporate Fridays. The only time you'll probably really take a Friday class is um, your first semester. First semester freshmen are required to take an orientation class and that class is offered on Friday mornings. But after your first semester and you complete that class, all classes are either going to be Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, giving you Friday off. Um, we do have some weekend classes available, but those are for more um, upper class, uh, upperclassmen classes or graduate classes. And yes, a big question I get is, can freshmen uh, have cars on campus? Yes, as a freshman, you can have cars on campus and your parking pass is included in your tuition. So as far as athletics, um, Tennessee State University is an NCAA Division I school. We are a part of the Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference. For our men's sports, we have basketball, football, golf, tennis, track and field. And for our women's, we have basketball, softball, tennis, golf, volleyball, and track and field. Um, we also do have cheerleading and dance teams. So our dance teams are going to be our sophisticated ladies that dance with our uh, aristocratic bands. And then we have our Tiger Gems dance team that dances during basketball season. And yes, at Tennessee State University, cheerleading is considered a sport. So the cheerleading department does have scholarships available for uh, 
those students that are interested in cheerleading. So I just wanted to give you a kind of a, just a, a look at some of the facilities that we have on campus. For our football team, we have our indoor practice facility. Um, also, you can see here is Keene Hall, which is going to be our gym located inside of um, our student center. That is where our volleyball team plays. Uh, we have William Jasper Hill Stadium, which is our on-campus football uh, stadium, which we affectionately call the whole. Um, then we also have our Gentry Center, which is our large uh, Gentry Center complex. That is where our men's and women's basketball team play. Uh, we also do have an indoor track here. So if you want to walk the track, um, also, we have a student athletic workout center in there. Uh, we have a workout facility for our students, which is like a gym. We have an indoor pool located there. And there are also classrooms located inside the Gentry Center. If you are in uh, one of the like sports sciences or dance or some one of those um, concentrations, then we have classrooms located in there for that. And also I have shown here is Nissan Stadium. Now Nissan Stadium is the stadium for the Tennessee Titans. However, we do play some of our games a year at the Nissan Stadium. So Tennessee State University has our own um, locker room located inside of Nissan Stadium dedicated just for us so that we can play our, we play our classic games there and our homecoming games. So just imagine you get to have homecoming at an NFL stadium. There are suites there. So as uh, you can rent out the suites, that's always fun. We always do that every year. Um, you know, I mean, and we, we tend to, you know, pack that thing out as much as we can. And we just have an amazing time. Our band sounds great there. And it's just a prideful thing to be able to say that our boys get to play on an NFL uh, stadium before they graduate. So that's something really fun. And also, like I stated, we have homecoming there. So just imagine homecoming. We, we pack out that parking lot with our tailgating. So tailgating runs from the school on down to the Nissan Stadium. I mean, homecoming is just an experience that you have to experience for yourself. But we love homecoming. And I am the first to say I am very sad that we will not have homecoming this year. So that is just some of our facilities. Um, next, oh, we are, uh, this is our aristocratic bands. And yes, we have been voted uh, the number one HBCU band in the country. We are so very proud of our aristocratic bands. Um, they get to do so many things. They're invited to participate in so many things. And this is a uh, why a lot of our students come to TSU. We get thousands of students that audition every year um, and apply for the band. It's very competitive, but we are so proud of them. Um, they do offer scholarships. Uh, right now, our auditions are virtual. So if you are interested in receiving more information about our band, I have listed our website there, which is aristocratabands.com. If you go there, you get more information about the band, our audition requirements, and that's going to be for band and sophisticated ladies, as well as scholarship opportunities and the applications are located on the website. So just make sure if you're interested in that to take note of that website. That's where all of it's located. So moving along to student organizations, we, uh, we have a very very active student life on campus. We have over 100 plus student organizations on campus. We have organizations for everything. I mean, we have organizations for our colleges, um, our departments, majors, a special interest. We even have organizations for where you're from. So we have like St. Louis Club, Detroit Club, you know, um, we have dance troops, modeling troops. I mean, we have so many amazing organizations on campus. Uh, one thing I really like to point out is to really encourage incoming freshmen to join the organizations that are allowed for freshmen, especially those in departments, uh, because those students will be offered scholarships. So for instance, um, in the supply chain management concept, concentration in the College of Business. If you join the Supply Chain Management Student Organization, you are one of the first students that are going to get scholarship opportunities as well as um, internship opportunities in supply chain as being a part of that organization. So we definitely encourage students to do that. Um, we also have our Divine Nine Greek Letter organizations on campus and currently we do have all nine organizations 
active on campus. Um, and to kind of give you a glimpse into our organizations, we have what we call Courtyard Wednesday. Wednesday is the biggest day on campus for our students. They get dressed up, put on your little cute clothes, and come on over to the courtyard. Uh, we have our organization set up with tables, passing out information, um, passing out goodies. They have a DJ set up that plays music. Sometimes we have food trucks. It's just a good time and gives you an opportunity to see the organizations in action, see the Greek strolling, and that is always something to look forward to. Um, also listed here, I showed what organizations can freshmen join. So that would be SGA, PEP Club, Resident Hall Councils, and then the department organizations. So I just wanted to kind of show a couple of the resident halls that are available for freshmen. Uh, we do have more resident halls available on campus as well as our new resident hall, uh, residence hall that is being uh, built right now as we speak. It will be, um, I think it is to be completed by the end of next year. So if we have any juniors, um, even as well as some of you, uh, going into your senior year, uh, that dorm, those dorms might be available by the time you get there. So that's something that we're very excited about for this next class coming up in 2021. But for now, these are our main dormitories for our freshmen. We have Wilson Hall, which is our freshman girls dormitory. It is roommate style uh, with uh, community bathrooms and showers. We also have um, we have located in there, we have um, study rooms, we have uh, activity rooms for students to be able to congregate. Uh, we have TVs located there that allow you to put in Roku's and fire sticks for them to have movie nights and stuff. And also laundry facilities are located in all these dorms and laundry facilities are free on campus. So you don't have to drag all your clothes home or pay for uh, to wash your clothes. You can do it right there in the dorm for free. Um, so that is Wilson Hall. Um, next, we have Watson Hall, which is our male's freshman dormitory. Uh, it is also roommate style with uh, community bathrooms and showers. Uh, also, with the, with the dorms that have community style bathrooms, they, they do have sinks and mirrors in the rooms. So you do have your own, uh, your own sink, your own mirror, and everything located in the room. Uh, and then the bathrooms and showers are community. Uh, so uh, that is our freshman boys dorm. And then we have Hill Hall. Hill Hall is our most, uh, one of our most desirable dorms on campus. It has been uh, recently updated and it is our honors college dorm. So that means that uh, even as an incoming freshman, you can stay there, but you will have to apply for the honors college before you can be accepted into the dorm. And I will have the requirements for honors college later um, in my presentation. But that dormitory is gonna be suite style rooms uh, with connecting bathrooms. Um, and uh, as you can see, they also have the common areas as well as activity rooms. And that dormitory is going to be co-ed. It's men and women allowed to stay in that dorm. So now uh, I'm just going to briefly go over our uh, colleges and schools and some of our majors. Um, I'm going to go over this kind of quickly so I don't, you know, have to drag on about it, but I will uh, advise you if you want to, you can um, just take a screenshot of the majors and stuff that we offer or all of the information that I'm going over today is located on our website, tnstate.edu. So these are a list of the colleges and schools we offer at TSU. We have agriculture, business, education, engineering, health science, liberal arts, life and physical science and public service, and then our graduate school. So I know this is kind of tiny, but this is just a, a kind of overview of some of the majors we have. I, well, all of the majors we have, and I'll just touch on some of our most popular majors. Um, Agricultural Sciences is one of our top schools at Tennessee State University. I will let you all know that our College of Agriculture gets a lot of scholarship money. Um, they do have scholarship. I mean, even today, uh, we are a week into school and they are still allowing students to apply for scholarships. So if you're looking to go into a major where you can where you can secure funds and scholarships, I would highly recommend looking into our College of Agriculture because of the amount of scholarship dollars that they have available. Um, some of the things that they offer that is very popular is agribusiness. So even if you're looking into going to business, they do have that. Um, 
our environmental sciences. They do have pre-veterinary, so if you're interested in that, and pre-med. So they offer that in agricultural sciences. Another thing that they offer in agriculture that you wouldn't think they offer is fashion merchandising. So if you're looking to get into the fashion industry, that is offered in the College of Agriculture. Um, also, our biology, made our, bi our biology major, um, that is also uh, our most popular major for students that are looking to go into medicine. We do have a bridge program with Meharry that connects students to go straight from TSU into Meharry, which I'll talk about that a little later. Um, so that is one of our popular majors, uh, business administration. That is where I graduated from both times. Uh, we do, I think, our most popular program program in business administration is going to be our supply chain management. Like I stated, we have some amazing internship and scholarship um, opportunities available in supply chain. That is a very desirable um, in-demand field right now. So that is uh, our, the majority of our business admin students do concentrate in supply chain management. Also, we have a uh, computer science, criminal justice, uh, dental hygiene. Now, dental hygiene is uh, the only, I think the only program where we offer an associate's degree. So what's so cool about our dental hygiene program is that you can go, you can come, you can get your associate's degree in dental hygiene after two years, then you can start working. You can start working as a dental hygienist and we also have a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene and we're one of the fewest schools in the country that offer a bachelor's degree in dental hygiene so you can complete your two years get your associate's degree start working and still complete your final two years and receive a bachelor's degree so that means you're working while you're completing your degree so that is a very in-demand um that is very in-demand major because of that opportunity um, and then we will move on to some other majors. We have education. We do have um, several engineering programs. We, uh, we, I get a question a lot about do we have architecture? We don't have architecture, but we do have architectural engineering, which is better because you are getting the best of both worlds. You are getting that um, engineering experience as well as that architectural experience. Um, uh, we have our healthcare administration, healthcare information, our health sciences. Uh, we just built a brand new state-of-the-art health sciences building that just opened this year. It is a big, beautiful, amazing building. So I'm very excited for our health sciences uh, students that are able to have that. Um, we also have several music concentrations, which we um, attract a lot of students for that because of our band, um, political science, pre-law, our social work program is one of the top programs in the country. We do have terminal degrees in psychology and social work, which means that you can get all the way up to a doctorate in those programs. And then we also have some other online programs and certificates and professional studies that are complete online degrees. Uh, like I stated, if you did not see anything here or if you um if this is going a little fast then just like i stated all of this information for our majors are located on the website so those are the majors that we offer also on the website you can get our minors uh, that we offer as well because you are allowed to add minors to your degree programs just some additional programs we have at TSU. We do have Air Force ROTC. If you are interested in any other branch of ROTC, we do partner with Vanderbilt University for that. Um, we have our Honors College, which to get into our Honors College, you have to have a 3.4 GPA, 25 ACT or 1220 on the SAT. We have our online education, our certificate programs, as I stated, and our Bachelor of Science Doctor of Medicine program, which is where you will complete your first three years at TSU. Then in your final year, you, uh, if you are selected for that program, you will start in your fourth year taking classes at Meharry Medical College. And then after you complete your bachelor's, you will have an easy transition straight from TSU into Meharry Medical College. So what we all want to know, what are the admission requirements? So these are the current admission requirements for Tennessee State University. Um, we do require a 2.5 uh, GPA 
for um, our basic admission. However, if you have over a 3.2 weighted GPA, you are given guaranteed admission to the university. So what does that mean? That means we are not looking at test scores. So although you may send your test scores in, we are not gonna take your test scores into consideration if your GPA is over a 3.2 weighted. Um, also, um, in order to be in order to be considered for scholarships, we have a minimum of a 19 ACT and a 900 SAT. But for the minimum acceptance into the university, you will need a 16 on the ACT or a 760 on the SAT. Um, I haven't got word yet if they're going to weigh the test scores uh, for fall 2021. So we're still kind of waiting on that decision. So if you want to just keep, you know, in contact with us, checking our website, we will update that information as soon as we get it. Also, if you do not meet the basic qualifications for entrance, we do have an admissions appeal that you can appeal um, to try to get entry into the university. So all is not lost if you're not initially accepted. Um, we did waive our test scores for this fall. And uh, you are required to have one unit of U.S. history for um, admittance. Uh, all we need is your application, your application fee, uh, your initial transcripts, and then your final transcripts upon graduation, and if applicable, your test scores. Now, we are also located on the Common Black College app. For those of you all who are not familiar, I've put the web address there, but the Common Black College app is a website that uh, houses about 60 HBCUs. You can apply with one application fee, uh, upload your transcripts, upload your test scores, uh, upload all of your in information. You do that on the Common Black College app. You select TSU as one of your top four schools, and then we will receive your information. So we'll go in, pull all your transcripts and test scores out of there, and get you quickly admitted to the university. Um, also, I will be providing my information at the end. So if you have applied on the Common Black College app and you want to get your admission a little faster, you have a direct contact to the school. So just uh, reach out to me and say, hey, I applied on CBCA, and I will go in and pull your information. And if you meet our minimum qualifications, I will go ahead and get you accepted immediately so you don't have to wait. So if you'll go ahead and apply there, just let me know and I'll go ahead and get you admitted to the university if you meet our standards. So tuition and fees, I'm just gonna show you a couple of charts about the tuition and fees for TSU. This is what our current fees are. So just to kind of give a clarification, um, if you are located in the state of Tennessee, you, you do not pay tuition. Uh, what you pay is uh, what is called an undergraduate maintenance fee. Tuition is for out-of-state students. So our, our undergraduate maintenance fee, so most of our freshmen, if you look down on the chart, uh, most of our incoming freshmen start off with 15 hours. So as you see here, 15 hours is a 3513 plus our program service fee, which comes to uh, $4,092. That is what an in-state student would pay. Now, for an out-of-state student, you would add tuition to that. And the tuition for out-of-state students for 15 hours is $6,678 for a total out-of-state of, of $10,770. That's just for tuition. Uh, we also will have to add the housing and the meal plan, but this is what you would pay, and the in-state students would pay $4,092. So this is a breakdown of our fees. Um, and like I stated, this is located on our website. Now, for our housing, this is an overview of what our housing costs. Um, so these are all the different dorms. As you can see, most of the dorms for double occupancy is about the same. Um, we do not, we have not gotten to the point where we have triple occupancy in the room, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, when I went to TSU, it was three of us in the room. Yeah. That was that was an experience, but now you all are lucky. You don't really have to. Uh, you don't have that to worry about. So it would be uh, what you would focus on is the double occupancy or the single occupancy, which you can see for double occupancy, which is most of our students, it's going to be around two thousand dollars. So these are the different costs, and then when you go down to our new uh, our four complex, which is our campus apartments, which are for upperclassmen, then you see that price is going to be thirty two seventy two. So these are our room and board prices. 
Now for meal plans, this is just kind of an overview of our meal plans. Uh, most students are going to either go with the seven day or the five day. What that means is you're going to, uh, if, let's say you have the seven day meal plan. So that means you're gonna be given three meals a day um, with a $300 declining balance. That's gonna be an extra $300 that you're gonna get for uh, other things. Uh, in the dining facilities, but seven days. So that means seven days a week, you'll be able to access three meals. And we have several opportunities, uh, different facilities on campus where you can eat. So for instance, in our uh, student center, we have our main campus dining, which is our cafeteria, which has uh, like, a, it is a buffet style. We have ice cream bar, um, a hot meal bar, cereal, um, bar that's all day salad bar um, they do like a hibachi bowl thing and then like a pizza bar um, we also have our grill which is like hamburgers um, chicken sandwiches things like that um, and then our most popular area is going to be our sub which is going to have um, we have a chick-fil-a a pizza hut and a starbucks and you are allowed to use your meal plan in there so let's say that tomorrow you want to eat lunch at Chick-fil-A or if every day you want to eat lunch at Chick-fil-A because that's what I do uh, then you can use your meal plan um, to eat in the Chick-fil-A or the Starbucks or the Pizza Hut so that's something that our, our students really love that it gives them options to be able to eat I guess you could say outside food so this is kind of a this is an overview of our meal plans so also, uh, something that we offer for our students, if you are within a 250 mile radius, so let's say that you are an out of state student, like uh, you're located in Alabama, Kentucky, or somewhere out of state that's within 250 miles of the university, we're going to give you um, an, a 250 mile radius tuition rate. So that means that we're going to basically cut your tuition by 60% if your high school is located within that 250 mile radius. So I get a lot of questions, well, mine is 255 or 260. We do have some strength, we do have schools that are located up to about 300 miles that do qualify. So you would just have to reach out to financial aid to find out if your high school qualifies, but this is gonna make your uh, tuition almost you're gonna be basically almost like an in-state student with this 250 mile radius. So especially our students in Atlanta. So yes, Atlanta, if you are in Atlanta, uh, Atlanta does qualify for the 250 mile radius. Um, and like I said, it doesn't go by your address, it goes by the address of your high school. So as you can see um, here for 15 hours, the tuition is originally 6678, six, uh, six, six but with that tuition, um, with that 250 mile discount, it's gonna go down to 2956. So as you can see, that's a huge discount. So if you are in that radius, please make sure that you check into that. You don't have to apply for anything. If you're in that radius, it's gonna automatically um, credit to your account. So as far as financial aid, these are all the different options of financial aid we have available. We have Pell Grants loans. Um, we have grants, federal work study. We do offer work study for students, even freshman students. Uh, Perkins loans. Um, as I've stated throughout this presentation, you can get scholarships for band, athletics, uh, also departmental scholarships, which is like your engineering, your college of business. Uh, we have special scholarships and then third party grant scholarships. Uh, you would need to contact the third party. So some of our scholarship opportunities that are accepted at the university, uh, we do accept scholarships from UNCF, uh, Thurgood Marshall College Fund, Scholarship America, uh, you can also locate scholarships on FastWeb. And then also, I, I always like to tell students about the Tennessee State University National Alumni, I mean, National Alumni Association. So in most of our major cities across the country, we have TSU uh, National Alumni Association chapters. And these chapters give scholarships. And I think a lot of students don't know that. Um, and mostly they give scholarships to incoming first-time freshmen. I know here in Nashville, for the Nashville chapter, they have a great scholarship committee that awards scholarships every year. Um, 
for our students and we have to beg these students to apply. So if you are located in a major city or if you're located in a city where there is a TSU alumni chapter, then please reach out to that chapter and find out what the qualifications and deadlines are for their scholarships so that you can apply for that. Um, that so that will give you a little something extra to help you out um, when you come to TSU. So also to be considered uh, for scholarships, in-state students must have a minimum of a 2.9 GPA, a 19 on the ACT and 900 on the SAT. So there are, if you do qualify for the scholarships, you don't have to apply for anything. If you qualify, we will let you know. So once you have applied and been accepted to the university, you will receive a letter letting you know that you qualify for a scholarship and how much money you apply for, that you qualify for, excuse me. Um, there are a limited number of academic scholarships for out-of-state students, but you must meet, uh, meet the same criteria. And if you do reach out to our department and you are a stellar uh, student, then we will make sure that you have the money that you need to attend TSU. Um, also, we have payment plans for the fall and the spring. Uh, if you cannot uh, pay for everything up front, let's say you have to pay out of pocket, uh, we do have payment plans. And also there are fee waivers for State of Tennessee employees. So that is a little bit about uh, our scholarship opportunities, our financial aid. I am willing to take questions after if anybody has any questions, but this is our amazing admission staff here at Tennessee State University. I have just uh, placed here our general admissions uh, contact information. So our uh, general admissions email is admissions at tnstate.edu, where you can reach out to us or have transcripts emailed to us or whatever you need. Um, you can uh, reach us there. Uh, we are located on several social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, uh, and we even got a TikTok. Now you're not gonna see me on TikTok, but we do have some younger um, employees in our office that do sometimes record TikTok videos. So all of our social media handle social media handles are gonna be TSU admission. So go look us up on um, Instagram, Facebook. That's where you're going to get the first news of anything we have offering as far as anything that's going to be waived for scholarship opportunities, anything. We're going to post that on our uh, Facebook and Instagram. As for me, this is my contact information. Um, I am quickest uh, reached at my email address, which is located there at the bottom, pjohnso4 at tnstay.edu. If you have any additional questions that you want to ask outside of this meeting, then you can reach out to me at my email address. Also, I have located there my calendly.com. That is my appointment setter. So, if you want to set an appointment with me, um, you want to talk further over the phone, via Zoom, whatever, um, I am available. I take appointments all day. So just set an appointment with me and we can um, discuss your further education at TSU. Um, also, I've been working from home. So also located there is my remote phone number. So you have a million different ways to get in touch with me. Like I said, if you've applied to the Common Black College app, reach out to me. I will pull your application. Go ahead and get you admitted to the university. Um, if you have applied to the school, you can also reach out to me. Or since you've come on this meeting today, if you reach out to me, I will make sure that as soon as you reach out to me, if you meet the qualifications, I'll go ahead and get you admitted so you don't have to wait. So please, if you're interested in applying, write down my information. Um, and that is it for me. And if we have any more questions, I am here to answer any questions that we have further than that. I know I told a lot of stuff, but if we have any more questions, I would definitely assist. I have a question. Okay. Does Tennessee State have a good physical therapy program? Yes, we do have a good physical therapy program. That is one of our more popular programs on campus. Um, if you want more information about our physical therapy program then just go onto our website um all of the information is there but that is one of our more popular programs and i do believe our classes for that go between the main campus and the downtown campus 
Thank, thank you, Ms. Portia, for asking, um, answering that question and for the information. I want to thank Ms. Portia and Ms. Crystal. Um, we have lots of questions in our chat box. And so um, parents and students, if you all will continue to type those in, we do have two members of our committee who are going to ask those questions of our presenters. Um, so again, thank you all for typing in your questions in the chat box. And so I will now turn it over to uh, Ms. Janita Walker and Brandis Hudson to ask questions of our TSU and Hampton representatives. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Our first question, our second question for today is from Lisa. She would like to know how the application process works if a student does not yet have test scores. Can the application be submitted pending scores or does the student have to wait until after the test has been taken to submit their application. Okay, this is Ms. Jones from Hampton University. In terms of submitting the application, we do ask that the students go ahead and do that on our website or either by using the Common App. You do not have to send your scores in initially when you submit your application. You will have time in which to send your one letter of recommendation, your essay, your transcript, and then later your scores once you take that exam. We do want you to keep in mind that you cannot give you a decision until we get all of those credentials in. So definitely, as soon as you send all of the information that is required, we will then expediently make that decision and get you out your decision. We always try to get our um, early action decisions out by the end of December. So if you apply by November 1st and have everything in, then look for your decision by November, um, excuse me, by the end of December. Um, I would just like to say it's the exact same thing for TSU. Um, if you have not taken your test yet, uh, still go ahead and apply, get all of your other documentation in. Um, and then once, you re once we receive your test scores, then we will complete your application. Um, rem also remember that you will only be tentatively admitted until you graduate. So once you graduate and we get your final um, your final transcripts upon graduation, then we will fully accept you. But in order to even get the tentative admission, then you would need to submit your test scores. But yes, I would say go ahead and start working and getting all of the other things in first. Okay, another question from the chat. Are SAT essay scores required in the application? So I would start with Crystal first, please. Okay. okay. In reference to the SAT and ACT, we do not require the essay from either of those exams. So you can save that money. We do not require those essays. And that's going to be the same for TSU. Okay. What are the requirements, and this question is from Naomi, what are the requirements for the honors colleges at both universities? And we'll start with you, Crystal. In reference to our honors college, the student must have at least a 3.3 cumulative, excuse me, 3.3 grade point average, and that is a Hampton GPA. So actually you apply to our honors college once you are a student here at the university. The end of your sophomore year, you will have an opportunity to attend a workshop with our honors college professionals and then apply for that particular program and they'll let you know before you go on until your sophomore year. Yes, and the um, admission requirements for our Honors College is going to be a 3.4 GPA, um, a 25 on the ACT, or a 1220 on the SAT. Um, if you go to uh, tnstate.edu and type in Honors College and go to the webpage, then there will be an Honors College um, application there for you to apply to the Honors College. Okay, another question. This is from Adrian. How is TSU and Hampton addressing classes, housing, dining, and social activities in the wake of COVID-19? There's also another part of the question. Do the respective websites have COVID-19 protocols listed? Okay. At Hampton, we are addressing our problem or our challenge very easily. Our students are taking classes online for this fall semester. We're praying and hoping that we'll be able to bring students back in the spring, but presently 
for the fall, everyone is doing remote learning and our protocols are on our website. Um, at Tennessee State University, we have allowed our students to move back on campus. Um, however, we have um, implemented a two week safer in place order, meaning that they will um, attend for the first two weeks. They are attending class online. Their dining services is being uh, sent to the dorms. Um, everything is being done in the dormitories. They also have implemented a curfew so that the students have to, if they do have to leave for essential activities, they do have to be back into the dorm by a certain time and they will have to stay there until um, 6 a.m. in the morning. So after the two week uh, safer in place that we have uh, for our students, then they will go into the classroom for those classes that are being offered online. A lot of our classes, such as the classes that I teach, are going online completely. Uh, so they will not be taught in person, but some of the classes will go in person. However, there have been guidelines put in place to socially distance in the classroom, to make sure that they are cleaning uh, the classrooms in between each, uh, after each class is over um, and there have been guidelines placed uh, there have been social distancing guidelines that have been put in place on campus for uh, social distancing of our students in other uh, parts of the campus and we have uh, implemented that our that our semester will end um, at Thanksgiving and those uh, protocols and guidelines all of the protocols and guidelines for this are located on our website I know that this question was somewhat covered um, during the presentation for TSU. If you could, we're just gonna ask it again just to make sure that everyone gets the answer that they're looking for. It's from Chris, Kristen. She wants to know if there is an agreement to consider students within certain radius to be considered in state. So I would assume that's for TSU because we're a private institution, so all of our students um, pay the same tuition room and board. Yes, uh, like I stated um, in our in my presentation, we do have what's called a 250 mile radius. You're not going to be considered an in-state student. However, if you are within that radius, you will receive um, a 60% discount off of your out-of-state tuition, which is going to bring your fees down relatively close to that of an in-state student. Um, also, uh, we do have uh, certain schools that we have made exceptions for outside of the 250 mile radius. So if you are interested in knowing if your student, if your uh, high school qualifies, then you can reach out to our financial aid department and they will let you know if your high school qualifies for that 250 mile radius. The next question will apply to the both of you. Why did you choose to work at your institution? And then another question that you can just follow behind. What do you recommend students to do in their junior year to get prepared for college? Hmm. Wow. Why did I choose to work at my alma mater? Um, quite honestly, it was God. Because <laughs> I had no intentions of coming to work here after graduating in 1989. But my friend's mother suggested that I apply at some point 20 years ago. <laughs> and I applied, got the job, um, got promoted within a year and have been here ever since. And it has been such a joy, um, just such a rewarding opportunity because I have had the opportunity to travel throughout the United States, meet other alum, but most importantly, meet students like yourselves that are interested in furthering their education and doing some productive things in their lives. And so this has definitely been one of the best choices that I've made. Now, in terms of juniors, some things that you'll need to do in order to prepare for this next phase of your life, definitely research various schools that you might be interested in, but take a step back and consider what it is that you are interested in, what it is that you're looking for in a college or university, whether it's a, a large school, um, a medium-sized school, which we're considered, a small school, whether you're looking for to be in the South, in the North, the Midwest, et cetera, looking at the various majors that you're interested in. And even before that, 
you want to consider the classes that you're taking because we always want you to take rigorous types of classes, but we want you to challenge yourselves. We want to make sure that you're learning what it is that you need to learn while you're in the high school setting. Oftentimes students will um, shy away from that math, if I may. And I often tell students, if you're going to go into the sciences, definitely you need to take a math and you need to be prepared for that math prior to getting to a Hampton, because sometimes it can be a little challenging because a lot of our classes are taught by individuals that might have an accent. And so if you're in the class and you are not strong in that math area and you're not understanding what the teacher is saying, in fact, I had a phone call about this on yesterday, um, a student that's already in the classroom and having this challenge. But if you're in that classroom not understanding what the, the, the teacher is saying and you don't have the skill set that you should have retained while in high school, then you're gonna have a challenge. So definitely I would encourage you to learn all that you can learn um, from the teachers that you have before you that are free of charge at this present time. Those are the, your, your high school teachers. And also consider when the world opens up again, volunteering in the areas that you're interested in, because those are, those are the experiences that will help you to um, kind of determine where it is and what it is that you would like to do going forward. Because working behind a computer or working with people is not for everyone. And sometimes working behind a computer or behind the scenes uh, might be what it is that you really need to do. So again, make good grades, um, learn all that you can learn, do yourself and um, take the opportunities of uh, volunteering when you can, and definitely do your research on all of the wonderful colleges and universities, all of the wonderful HBCUs that are in this United States, so. Okay, well, as for me, uh, the reason why I chose to work at TSU, um, I, I did absolutely uh, love my experience of attending Tennessee State University. I really um, didn't have many plans of going into higher education, um, but I did, when I was going through my master's degree, I was working with undergraduate students um, in supply chain, and I just absolutely enjoyed it. I loved it and I felt like I had a calling on my life. <laughs> I just, it, it just, it, it gave me a different feeling that I was getting uh, working in, in like, I guess you could say corporate America. I wasn't very happy there at all. Um, and so being back at TSU, working with those students, having students telling me that they would not have graduated if it wasn't for me. I would not have came to TSU if it wasn't for you. I mean, that is just, a feeling that I cannot describe. Uh, and I, I actually had administrators and professors at TSU that believed in me. That's why I always encourage my students that please, when you go to college, establish relationships with your professors, with the administrators, because you never know what impact they could have on your life one day. And it was a professor that, um, that um, recommended me to teach my class that I teach now. Um, it was an administrator that gave me the opportunity uh, to work in the admissions office. So it's just that family feeling. Uh, we look out for our students just like they looked out for me uh, and make sure that I was successful, uh, make sure I had a family at TSU. That is what I wanna give to other students. So that's why I decided to work at, at TSU and so that I could give that the same thing that I received to other students. Um, so I, I just absolutely enjoy what I do and hopefully I will be doing this for another 50 years. <laughs> and um, I want to say even if I'm not a TSU, I just want to, I will always work at HBCUs because HBCUs are still very relevant and still very important. So I will encourage you if you're looking at other schools, it is okay, but nobody is going to love you like an HBCU. So please take that into consideration. Um, as, what was the other question? I'm sorry, I just got to testify. That's okay. What so the other, the, uh, the other question was, <laughs> what do you, um, oh, would you recommend career. students to do in their junior year to get prepared yes. for college? Thank you. Okay, so um, I always recommend, especially for juniors, um, one thing I see a lot of is 
uh, you know, students uh, starting, you know, kind of late in the process as far as applying and uh, being very discouraged because of, of not having the desired GPA that they would like to be able to qualify for things that they need. So in your junior year, I would encourage you to please make sure that you are working really hard to either maintain or achieve the best GPA that you can, because that is gonna determine if you are accepted. That is gonna determine how much scholarship money you receive. You know, that is gonna determine a lot of things is gonna be that GPA and those test scores. So please make sure that now in your junior year that you are taking that very seriously, that you're working very hard to ensure that you graduate with the best GPA that you can. Because once you get to college, it's not really going to matter because then your college GPA is going to take over. But in order to get into that initial year, you have to make sure that you have a great, a good, as good as possible GPA to ensure that you can take advantage of everything available. Um, start working on those tests now to, you know, go ahead and start taking your ACT, your SAT, um, because those are the things that are gonna secure um, the most desirable things that you're looking for, and that is money. Um, also, um, as she stated, you're gonna make sure that you're researching schools, make sure that you're researching the schools, looking at everything, um, asking questions. If you have, if you know students that are attending there, you know, get make sure that you're fully researching these schools to ensure that you are going somewhere where it's the best fit. Um, and, and look at other stuff, you know, because a lot of times it's very common for students to, you have dreams in high school and then you get to college and you start researching other stuff and it's like now when i get calls every day for students that want to change their major um so re look at all the different colleges um and majors and degree options like i said agriculture has fashion you wouldn't think that but they do and agriculture has the most scholarship money at our school so look into that so just make sure you're doing a lot of research and ensuring that you're going where you are going to get the most out of your college experience and just make sure that you're fully prepared thank you um our next question is from taylor um and this is specifically for tsu taylor tried to apply but did not see a freshman option on the application form? Okay, so Taylor, um, let me see. I'm gonna, if you missed my slide, I'm gonna drop my email address here again in the chat. I've just dropped my email address in the chat. Um, send me an email, send me an email and we will, I will take care of that for you. I'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, I'm not sure if this was answered, but this one was from Kristen um, asking, is there an agreement to consider students within certain uh, radius to be considered in-state? Example, Atlanta, Georgia. So um, Portia. Right. Yeah, so Atlanta is, uh, for the most, you know, Atlanta's so big, but for the most part, um, as far as I know right now, uh, pretty much all of Atlanta, um, the Atlanta metropolitan area is considered within our 250 mile radius. So we, uh, as of right now, our Atlanta students do receive that 250 mile radius discount. Um, if, like I stated, if you are unsure if your high school qualifies, then you can reach out to our financial aid department. But as far as I know right now, all all of Atlanta um, is considered our 250 mile radius. And I want to clarify again, you're not going to be considered an in-state student. What you're going to do is get a 60% discount off of that out-of-state tuition, which is going to make your rates close to that of what an in-state student pays. All right, thank you. Does TSU have a commercial music degree program? Um, if we have commercial music, it, it wouldn't necessarily be um, a degree program. It would be one of our concentrations in um, our music department. So we do have a commercial music concentration. So you would major in music and concentrate in commercial music. So this one is more towards um, the committee. Will these briefings and their presentation be available to look at later? So I'm gonna ask um, Sora Janine to respond to that. I'm sorry, Janine. Or Tawana. Yes. 
we do we have um, this session is being recorded so we will make this available for viewing later um, possibly on our web page on, on our uh, Facebook page okay this next question is about the money the scholarships what is the GPA requirement for ACT um, to receive a full scholarship Okay, so from Hampton, we do not offer full scholarships. We have uh, ranges of scholarships, and that is from 5000 to 25000 as to what we offer. The higher the score, the more the money. And so students need to have at least a 3.3 or higher GPA and 1100 or higher SAT or 22 or higher ACT. So again, as it relates to those scores, the higher the score, the more the money and the student needs to apply by November 1st in order to be considered for those scholarships by submitting all of your credentials. Um, also with Tennessee State University, um, what we do actually offer full scholarships. We do offer full academic scholarships and presidential scholarships, but just like Hampton, um, the higher the score, uh, you will qualify for those scholarships. So we don't actually, um, you have to have a, um, with, you know, with it, it, it's different scholarships. Our minimum scholarship is going to be a 2.9 GPA, but um, to get those full scholarships, it's going to be in those higher range um, GPAs and test scores. Uh, there is no set like a floor for that. It's just who are our students that are exceptional um, in those in those areas are going to receive scholarships, uh, full scholarships. So though, like I stated, those are letters that will go out once you apply. So for those full scholarships, it is if you want to be considered for those because the, it's it's really going to come on a um, earlier application uh, basis. So the earlier you apply, the earlier you get all of your documentation in and get accepted is is your uh, is the easiest way to qualify for one of those scholars for those full scholarships um and like i said you have to make sure everything's in and you don't have to apply for that we do have a scholarship portal located on our website that opens up october 1st but if you do qualify for a full scholarship uh once you are accepted a letter will be sent out to you to let you know okay this next question um i'm going to start with crystal on this one and then move over to Portia. My daughter hasn't had a chance to take the ACT due to COVID. Can we still apply or do we have to wait? Okay, so you can still apply to Hampton even though you've not been able to take that exam. Once you apply, you can email me and I, I'll you know, take all things into consideration but go ahead and send your transcript and your letter of recommendation and do the essay that's online. Once you receive the scores or have the opportunity to take, to take the test and, and to send the scores, you can let me know and then I'll pull your file and um, review the application. Um, same thing with TSU. You can go ahead and apply, get all of your other documentation in that we need, such as uh, transcripts, and uh, well, that would be about it uh, until we get your test scores, uh, but we would need your transcripts. And um, once you take the test, then you can also reach out to me as well. And then we can get that pulled and get you accepted once we have received your test scores. Also, you must uh, remember that if you have a 3.2 weighted GPA or higher, we will not need your test scores uh, in order to admit you. Um, so I can get you attentively admitted because uh, we do still need your test scores to have them on file, but we can give you a decision if we at least have your transcripts if your GPA is over 3.2. So if you have, if your GPA is higher than that, you have not taken the test yet, then you can still reach out to me, let me know, and then I can go ahead and get you admitted um, until you take that test and then we'll just put the test scores on your file. Thank you, and we have two questions we'll tie together. CJ wants to know, are applications available for fall 2021? And Corey wants to know if um, HU and TSU are considering applicants who are legacy as part of their admissions process. Um, our app, I'm sorry, what was the beginning of the question? If applications are available for fall 2021, and then if um, they are legacy from Hampton or from TSU, if that's considered 
and an application process. Okay. So our application opened on August 1st. And so, yes, you can go ahead and apply for 2021. We are ready to accept your applications. I've already started reviewing applications for the fall of 2021. We are, again, uh, utilizing the application on our website as well as the Common App. The application on our website is free at this moment. And then will be free until the end of August. So definitely, you can do so. And in reference to the legacy question, unfortunately, that is not officially taken into consideration when applying, but I do look at it when I'm reviewing the application. Um, as for TSU, our uh, 2021 application opened July 21st, but we had some glitches with it, so we've had to kind of remove it um, until we get that fixed. Uh, so that's why I had told the other students just email me, um, but we are working on that now to get that up back up and running. Um, however, if you do apply through the Common Black College app, then I and then you reach out to me and let me know that you have applied through the Common Black College app, then I can in the meantime pull your information from there and uh, submit your application um, through myself. Uh, into our system and get you a uh, process if you do um, CPCA in the meantime. And as far as legacy admission, we do not, as well as Hampton, we do not officially do um, legacy applications, but if, you know, we do also take that into consideration if you mention it when you apply. When you said that you take that into consideration when they apply, and what ways could that be demonstrated? Well, we're just saying we we just look at you know because we have a lot of students that say my parents attended TSU, you know things like that. But we do also have you know st our admission standards that we also have to meet. But let's say that you don't meet the admission standards and you have to appeal, then that is a time where students do mention about them being legacies. But we do not officially um, admit students on a legacy basis. And is that a question that's on the application or is that something that they can share in the essay? They can just share. Okay, the next question, I'm not sure um, if it was answered. So I'm gonna just ask just in case, it's from Xavier. What is the GPA requirements and ACT requirements to receive a full scholarship? So um, we can just start with Portia and move over to Crystal. Um, well, as we just mentioned, uh, for TSU's full scholarships, we're, it's not uh, a set number. Uh, we, we just look for our, uh, once we receive, we have a scholarship committee. Um, so once we receive applications, they do look for the highest GPAs and the highest test scores. Um, and from that, they decide how much scholarship money a student of a student um, qualifies for, and then you will receive that information from the scholarship committee. They decide uh, what is um, needed for those or what they look for for those full scholarships. So, but for a basic for a basic academic scholarship, um, they do start at a 2.9 GPA and go up. So it just all depends on exactly what your GPA is. And then you will receive a letter in the mail that will let you know that. And then you can also, uh, once that process starts going, they also have uh, where you can reach out to our financial aid or to our scholarship committee and discuss that further. We, and our scholarship portal opens October 1st so that you can go in and look to see what different qualifications are for different scholarships. And the same for Hampton, we do not offer full scholarships, but again, students that have a 3.3 or higher GPA, 1100 or higher SAT or 22 or higher ACT and apply by November 1st, will be considered for our merit-based scholarships, of which we have about 2.5 million, and the range is from 5,000 to 25,000 as to what we offer. And the higher the score, the more the money, and your scholarship offers will be made in writing, sent to you in the month of December. Okay, this question is for Ms. Crystal. Um, we don't take the ACT until September. Should we still apply to HU in August to take advantage of the waived application fee? 
Absolutely. There you go. That question was from Annie. Um, here's another question. Are all the business courses located at the downtown campus or do you go to the main campus as well? I believe this is for um, Ms. Portia Johnson. Um, so for, well, in the past, it was all of the core business classes. So that means once you get into your major, uh, the classes were conducted downtown. Being that we are now in this new um, era of online learning and going through COVID, things are looking a lot different. So, um, you know, it's just really going to depend at this point. But for the most part, our College of Business is located downtown. So the majority of your classes are going to be located such as your business related classes downtown. Now your general education classes and some of your basic uh, classes like um, uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics, things like that can be, uh, will be offered on the main campus. But once you get into your concentration, into your junior and senior year, uh, then those classes are all located downtown unless they have been moved to an online platform due to COVID. All right. Thank you. The next question, are any of the schools allowing in-person campus tours by appointment? So um, Crystal, and then we'll move over to Portia. Presently, we are not allowing any visitors on campus. Um, we're hoping that in the spring that we'll be able to do so, but presently we are not offering any visitors. Uh, same for TSU, we are not currently um, offering any on-campus tours. Um, we might offer them in the spring as well. Um, however, in the meantime, we do have a, a very detailed um, virtual tour of our main campus and our downtown campus that is, and it's interactive, and it is located on our website, tnstate.edu. If you go there, type in virtual tour in the search, then you can take a virtual tour of our complete uh, main and downtown campus. And also let me include that we also have a virtual tour. And if you go to our website, you can schedule that as well as you can schedule an opportunity to meet with three of our admission counselors, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays at 4 p.m. to um, speak with them live on our Zoom platform. Great. And um, we have a question from Courtney. Um, she applied on the Common Black College application for TSU and got accepted for this year, but she graduates in 2021. Does she need to reapply? Um, also, she hasn't taken her SAT and um, ACT, um, and they keep getting rescheduled. No, you do not have to reapply. Send me an email with your information in it, let me know what's going on, and then we will have to do um, a change of term for you. Okay, thank you. All right, the next question, how are you handling students who only receive credit or non-credit versus letter grades during their junior year Many students were counting on junior year to raise their GPA. And I think this is, um, well, they're just agreeing to Portia's point. Okay. So we can just start with either one of you. I'll just mention that presently we're taking it case by case. In fact, um, yesterday I had several of those applications that did not have a complete junior year with grades. What you may want to do is to include that information or your challenge in your essay to explain what may have happened in your particular situation. But we are taking it, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, um, taking the grades that you did end your junior year with and taking all of that into consideration. But if you want other things to be considered, definitely put that in an essay or a separate, separate supplemental um, document so that we can look at all of that. A question from Ariana. Um, what is the GPA requirement for both schools? So for us, we're looking for students to have close to a 3.0 Q um, GPA. And we'll take students above and below that. Our average last year was a 3.6. And so again, we take students above and below that average, but we're looking for students that have taken a rigorous course load of study and as my boss always say, 
we're in the admission business, so definitely put your best foot forward. Submit to us the information that you want to have considered, and we will definitely do what's best for you and what's best for the university in making the decision. Okay, we'll start with Portia on this one. What are the minimum app score requirements to app to opt out of certain classes? Okay, to answer the previous question, our minimum GPA is a 2.5. Um, we will, uh, if you have less than a 2.5, then you would have to complete an admissions appeal. Um, our average GPA is around a 3.4 um, due to our students are given guaranteed admission at a 3.2. Um, so as I stated, 3.2 guaranteed admission, uh, 2.5, uh, you will have to submit test scores. As far as, uh, what did you say, Johnny, are you testing out? Yes, it says to test out of um, certain classes. And, and they're asking, what, what do you need well, to- Well, they, they, um, what are the minimum app score requirements to opt out of certain classes? The AP um, Yeah, okay, so that, um, as far as the minimum, for to be able to test out of certain classes. That is something that they would have to discuss with the admissions counselors, um, what those uh, scores would have to be. So once they have applied to the school, they will be assigned an admissions counselor um, and then they can discuss that with them. Now for Hampton, if you have an AP score of three or higher in the um, social sciences and the English, then you can not have to take those classes and then in the physical science you have to have a four or higher the physical science and math you have to have a four four or higher for your um for those classes to be exempted and along with that same vein we do take dual enrollment credits so for students that have taken dual enrollment classes then you definitely want to submit to us your transcript from that college or university that you've attended while in high school. So keep that in mind. We too do take the AP and IB scores of three or higher or four or higher and the dual enrollment classes. Yes, and TSU takes dual, enro and dual enrollment credits as well. You just have to submit your college transcripts at the time that you will submit your other transcripts. And if you apply through CVCA, make sure you upload those transcripts there as well. Okay, well, we want to thank everyone for joining, uh, joining us for this great virtual tour. All of those questions were amazing, and we hope that you received the answers that you're looking for. Um, Ms. Portia and Ms. Crystal, you can contact them via email after this um, virtual tour if you have any more questions. And so we're going to ask our last question for this session. Um, will the recording of this meeting be available once this Zoom ends? Yes. <laughs> I will answer that. Thank you, uh, Brandis. Yes, the recording will be available on Alpha Delta Omega's uh, chapter's Facebook page. So that is Alpha Delta Omega chapter. And for those of you all who registered, pre-registered uh, via our Google form, we will provide a link for you along with Ms. Crystal and Ms. Portia's contact information directly. They have also placed their information in the chat box. So please um, look through the chat box for their uh, direct link. Thank you again, Brandis and Janita for facilitating our Q&A session. This has really been great. I know several people have um, ended their time with us, but just by show of hands, how many seniors do we have? If you could give us a reaction uh, within your reaction button, raise your hand, uh, seniors, how many high school seniors do we have on? Okay, I see a few. Okay, great. What about juniors? How many juniors do we have? Okay, good, good, good. A lot of juniors. Great. Do we have any sophomores? Okay, what about freshmen? Okay. 
All right. Well, our next thing we would like to congratulate we mentioned when we um, hosted our event, we wanted to pay it forward and to support our students who were interested in applying to these two fine universities. And so a congratulations goes to our first five registered attendees um, who registered first for the event. And um, should still be on, hopefully. If you see your name, so Kendall Burgess, Kaya Parker, Nyla Maple, you can wave at us. Uh, Laila, I hope I'm saying that right, Morton. Hi, Kendall. Um, Antonio Underwood, if you guys could wave at us. Hi, Nyla, I see you. I'm trying to scroll through. So I will email you all individually to ask you which university you would like to submit your application to. Um, I do know that Hampton, we know that Hampton is offering a, a free application fee or waiving the application fee for this month, but if you don't get a chance to apply by the end of this month and Hampton is your choice, we will will cover that application fee for you. The same for TSU, if you choose to apply to TSU, we will cover that application fee for you for that as well. So please be on the lookout for an email from me after this session. And so next we have our closing remarks by our committee chair, Ms. Chandra Pledd and myself. Thank you, Janine. This has been a wonderful event. We love HBCUs, um, and you will see several of us have on um, different HBCU paraphernalia. Uh, I, of course, have on my Hampton, and I have on my TSU uh, button, as I am alumnus of both schools. So we hope you have enjoyed this. We hope you have learned something new about Hampton and about Tennessee State, about HBCUs in general. We are here to help you along this journey. If you have any questions or you need us, please feel free to reach out to us. And we appreciate you for making our event a phenomenal event. Um, we know this was a little lengthy event, and so we appreciate you taking your time out on Saturday morning to come and to hear about these two wonderful universities. Um, attending the HBCU is developing friendships for life. Uh, there are literally people who are on this call that I have known 30 years and we are still friends. So I encourage you all to consider attending an HBCU and especially these two that we've listed today. So thank you so much for attending and I will turn it back to Ms. Davis. Thank you, Ms. Plez. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Janine Davis and I am the Vice President and a proud Fisk University alum. Um, as well as Tennessee State for my graduate degree. And so as the vice president slash program chairman, this is um, our um, give back to our community. Um, and this is a collaboration of our Target One, International Target One initiative, which is HBCU for Life, and also our signature program, which is our hashtag CAP or college admissions process, program. So this is a collaborative effort between those two committees, and we're so excited to host our first virtual college tour. If you are a junior or a senior and are interested in learning more information about our hashtag CAP program, I will put my email address in the chat box and you can email me to receive additional information. Also, please be on the lookout because our sorority internationally supports, again, HBCUs. We also support all colleges, but specifically HBCUs, those are close to our heart. The third week of September, we will host our HBCU week. And so be on the lookout, follow us on our Facebook page and on Instagram, and you will see more information about activities that we will have that are open to the public with uh, another HBCU tour happening within that week. So again, thank you all for participating. And if there are no other questions or comments, we will end our program at this time. Thank you.
If you want to unmute yourself, you're free to do so. <laughs> And do we want to answer those last couple questions that came in at the okay. end? Okay. I think there were like two questions. Do you see them, Ms. Tawana? I, I have one that I can read. Okay. One said, I've heard that certain schools are less likely to accept students who graduated early in three years because they view them as not completing four years of high school, even though they have earned all of their credits. Is this true for Hampton and TSU? So in reference to that question, and I think I responded to the young lady, but long as you meet the requirements, whether you do it in three years or four years, uh, four years of English, Algebra one, Algebra two, and Geometry, Biology, and Chemistry, two years of a social science and six electives, and meet the requirements of sending in your SAT or ACT scores of, um, let's say, 20 or higher, then definitely we can admit you to the university. As, and again, I'll, I'll put the um, disclaimer out, as long as you have good character and um, you know have not had any challenges with the law. <laughs> and the same, we, do, we as long as you meet the requirements and have the required um, classes, it does not matter if you completed it in three. Okay, and then there was another question. If we are graduating with the CNA license, certified nursing assistant, is there an accelerated BSN program offered at both schools? And for Hampton, yes, we do offer an accelerated program in our school of, um, excuse me, school of nursing. And I did answer her privately. Um, we have an RN to BSN <clears throat> and a BSN. That those are the two programs we offer. Okay. Those are the last questions. Thank you again, Ms. Crystal Jones from Hampton University and Ms. Portia Johnson from Tennessee State University and our chapter, our president, Ms. Tawana Williams for allowing us this opportunity to share and give back to our community. And again, we just appreciate you all for joining us this morning. So have a great rest of the day. Stay safe, wear your mask and wash your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Thank you. And Crystal and Portia and Janine and Chandra stay on. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Yes. Hi. Um, I didn't want to ask this question while everybody was here, but I was wondering, because my mom works at CSU, so I was wondering, like, is there, I guess, a certain scholarship for students that their parents work at the university? Yes, there is a fee waiver. Your mother would have to go um, on to human go to the TSU website and go on to human resources. Mm -hmm. um, and then under human resources, there is a link called forms. Mm -hmm. And on there, there are the forms for education assistance for dependents. So tell her to go on there and look at those, um, get that form <coughs> and, she and apply for the um, fee waiver for, the dep for her dependent, which would be you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let's see. I'm going to check the, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to check the chat box. I just need to get a couple pictures of y'all. Okay. Okay. And you know what? I forgot to ask if we got any um, while we were while with everybody. I guess because we didn't have the grid. I forgot. I got some doing it. I just wanted to make oh, okay. sure. Okay. I'm gonna stop recording. Good. <laughs>